Hi everyone, today's video is all about modeling decimal division. And you won't often be asked to actually create or build a decimal division model yourself, but more often you'll be asked to look at a picture and say what division question that picture is representing. So when we're talking about modeling decimal division, you'll often see these models using base 10 blocks. And a quick refresher, when we write a division equation, we have three parts. First is the dividend, and that's divided by the divisor, which gives us our answer or our quotient. So the dividend, remember, is what we're splitting apart. And the divisor could tell us one of two things depending on the story problem. It might tell us how many groups there are, or it might tell us how many items are in each group which means that depending on what the divisor told us, the quotient would tell us the opposite. In other words, if the divisor told us how many groups there were, the quotient would tell us how many items were in each group. And if the divisor told us how many items were in each group, the quotient would tell us how many full groups we have. So let's take a look at a decimal division model. You might see something like this. So I can see that I clearly have base 10 blocks that are set up in three equal groups. And I can write two different division equations from this model. The first one that jumps out to me right away is that I see that these pieces are split into three separate groups. That means my divisor for one of my equations could be three. Now if my divisor tells me how many groups I have, the quotient tells me how many items are in each group. So if I look at just one of those groups, that model shows me one and 14 hundredths. When I put them all together, that gives me my dividend or what I'm splitting apart. So in this case, my dividend is three and 42 hundredths because if I combined all of those blocks, I would have three and 42 hundredths in front of me. Now, the second division equation we could write still has to do with those three groups, but now the three is going to be our quotient. I could also write an equation where my answer is that I have three full groups. I'm still splitting apart three and 42 hundredths because my amount hasn't changed, but now my divisor tells me how many are in each group, which means I would be splitting apart the three and 42 hundredths into sets of one and 14 hundredths, which would leave me with three sets. Either one of those equations would be accurate for that particular model. That's dividing a decimal by a whole number or a decimal by a decimal giving us a whole number quotient. Let's take a look at one more. This time I see tenths grouped together and I can clearly see that I have three groups. Again, I can write two different equations. So the first one that jumps out at me uses a divisor of three. And in each group, I see eight skinny rods, which tells me that I have eight tenths. If I combined together all of those tenths and did my regrouping, my dividend would be that I was splitting apart the two and four tenths. I could also write an equation where my quotient is three. In this case, when my quotient is three, that means I'm taking those two and four tenths and dividing it into groups of eight tenths, which tells me that I end up with three full groups. Either one of those equations would be an accurate equation for this model. So be on the lookout for those three parts, the what we're splitting apart, how many groups or how many are in each group, and then making your quotient match based on your divisor, Either one of the equations would work because we don't have a story problem to go along with it. So that's how you'll see some decimal division models as we go through our unit together. Thanks for watching.